Welcome to the second part of this video that we are doing. This is 11th grade biology and we were doing classification of the different kingdoms. So we already know that there are about five kingdoms. According to Whittaker's uh, classification, we've already covered the kingdom of Protista and kingdom Monera. Okay, so we also learned that all Monerans, they're all bacteria and we did five different categories of the kingdom protista the next kingdom that we have to do is kingdom fungi or it has lots of components that is the fungus now fungi they are a unique kingdom very unique because these are all heterotrophs that means they do not prepare their own food like plants do or the other autotrophic bacteria do they have a lot of diversity and it can vary from a simple bread mold that occurs as a greenish color, a greenish cloud-like structure and uh, it can also refer to the mushrooms that we eat often. Alright, usually the fungi, they are filamentous. That means they are made up of lots of filaments. The only exception to this is yeast. Yeast is also part of this kingdom. Now the bodies have long, slender, thread-like structures called hyphae. These are like thread-like structures and the body is covered with them. The network of hyphae is known as mycelium. So the network of hy hyphae is known as mycelium. Some are continuous tubes that are filled with lots of cytoplasm. Some have different cross walls in their hyphae. And the cell walls of fungi are composed of two things. One is chitin. The other part is polysaccharides. So I will be writing in short. Most of them are heterotrophic. They absorb the organic matter from dead substances and hence they are called saprophytes. So they basically decompose. There are others that depend on the living organisms, the living plants and animals. Those are called parasites. Some of them can also take part in mutually beneficial relationships. They are called symbionts. And there are some that can also be existent with, in relation with other kinds of algae, for instance lichens. And in relation to roots of other plants, so in that case they will be known as mycorrhiza with a double R. So those are the different kinds of fungi that are there. Now reproduction is usually by vegetative means. It could be fragmentation, fission or it could be budding as well. It is asexual reproduction that takes place with the help of spores. Those are known as conidia. So that is about the asexual reproduction of fungi. The spores are called conidia. They can even also be called zoospores. They can also be called sporangiospores. Alright, and sexual reproduction can also take place. If the fungus is sexually reproducing, it has some different kinds of structures. It has oospores. We can also call them ascospores or basidiospores. The various spores, they are present in different fruiting bodies. And there are three steps of how the sexual reproduction takes place. The first step is fusion of protoplasm. That is known as plasmogamy. The next step after this is fusion of the nuclei called karyogamy. So first platoplasms, uh, the protoplasms they fuse and then the nuclei they fuse and then there is meiosis in the zygote that results in the haploid spores. So that is how the reproduction takes place according to the sexual means. Now when a fungus reproduces sexually there are two haploid hyphae. They come together and they fuse. 
two haploid hyphae they fuse together and sometimes it helps in uh, the result of diploid cells so let's say this each of those haploid hyphae they have n number of chromosomes so the result will be having 2m all right now sometimes in other kind of fungi there is an intervening dikaryotic a stage that means two nuclei are there but the cell is only one such a condition is called a dikaryon di means two karyon is for nuclei so two nuclei in one cell that means they have still not fused together and that is called the dikaryophase of the fungus afterwards what happens is those nuclei they, fee, uh, they fuse together and the cells become diploid instead of haploid so that is the information now the morphology of the mycelium and what kind of spores are produced how they are formed and how the fruiting bodies are developed that forms the basis of how we divide this kingdom into other various classes so let's go ahead with the classification of this kingdom the first part that we are going to do is phycomycetes so this is an important part phycomycetes now phycomycetes they are found in aquatic habitats and on decaying places damp places that are really moist the mycelium is aseptate and cenocytic aseptate and it is also cenocytic asexual reproduction is from zoospores or it can take place by aplanospores one difference between these two is zoospores they can move so they are motile these ones they are not motile these spores are produced in the sporangium so that is the place where these are formed so what happens is this results in the formation of a zygospore which is the fusion of the two gametes and some common examples are mucor rhizopus the bread mold and albugo which is present on mustard the next category of fungi kingdom is ascomycetes now it's also known as a sac fungi because the comycetes are multicellular okay so that is one feature multicellular comycetes they are saprophytic and they are decomposers as well they can even grow on the excretion of different animals on the dung as well the example is only yeast usually they are multicellular for instance penicillin otherwise they are unicellular for example in yeast now mycelium it is actually branched and septate asexual spores so asexual reproduction takes place by conidia which we've already done are the asexual spores they are produced outside of the body on a special mycelium called conidiospores or conidiospheres sexual spores where sexual reproduction takes place that are called ascospores they are produced in a sac now remember these were exogenous that means they were produced outside these are endogenous within a sac and they are placed in different kinds of bodies called ascocarps so ascocarps contain the sacs the sacs contain the spores example is truffles morels which can be eaten as well 
and we've already done the example of penicillium and yeast. The third category is that is Pseudomycetes. Now these are all the fungus that you can eat. That means the mushrooms, the bracket fungi, they're also known as puffballs. They can grow anywhere in a garden or in a forest. Soil, uh, pieces of wood, small tree stumps. It can be even inside a living organism, for example, rust or like blight. So what happens in the mycelium is it's branched and septed. So let me put it down. Branched and that means divided. Branched and separate mycelium. The other thing is that asexual spores are generally not there. Vegetative reproduction by fragmentation is quite common. Right, that is quite common. And what happens is that they get a dark karyotic stage in that as well, and that gives rise to the basidium. So there are no sex organs, but there is plasmogamy, just like it happens in ascomycetes. So the protoplasms, they do fuse together, but the nuclei do not fuse. So as a result, it has a dikaryotic structure. So this dikaryotic structure, that gives rise to a basidium. All right. And then it gives rise to basidiospores, which are produced outside on the basidium. They are arranged in fruiting bodies called basidiocarps. And some common members are agaricus and piscinia, which is the rust fungus. The other fourth component of this kingdom fungi is deuteromycetes. Deuteromycetes. Now what happens in this is it's called an imperfect fungi because only the asexual or vegetative phases are known. We do not know whether it sexually reproduces or not. So that is why it's called imperfect. Only the asexual reproduction is present. Sexual forms were discovered but and they were moved into classes that they actually deserve to belong to. So it is possible that maybe the asexual stage was given one name and placed under this category and the sexual name was given some other name. The sexual stage was given another name and placed under some other category. And later they were correctly identified and those kind of organisms were moved out of this part. Alright, and uh, the mycelium is septate and branched in this case as well. Some members are saprophytes or they are parasites. And sometimes large numbers of them, they help to decompose and disintegrate and degrade the litter. And it helps a lot in mineral cycling. Some examples are alternaria and trichoderma. So they help a lot in mineral recycling. So if you look at this um, quite confusing uh, passage now we have got. Okay, so we did about kingdom fungi. What were the main elements in that? We know that it is filamentous and they've got hyphae which are thread-like structures and that help in the formation of mycelium. And then it is filamentous as well. And basically five examples were given saprophytes. They can be parasitic. They can be symbiont. Uh, you can have lichens and mycorrhiza as well. So that is about how they get their nutrition. How does reproduction take place actually? It can either be asexual, that can happen to spores or conidia or zoospores or sporangiospores, or it can be sexual reproduction, that can happen through oospores, ascospores, basidiospores, or the other kinds of spores. So what happens is, first of all, the first phase is plasmogamy where protoplasm fuses into one then you have dikaryogamy now we also knew that uh, there are some kind of fungus where the stage does not exist where actually two nucleus reside in one cell that's called the dikaryon but otherwise normally it's karyogamy and finally a haploid spore is formed and we also did about four different kinds of uh, members of this kingdom we did phycomycetes where mycelium is aseptic and cenocytic. The asexual reproduction takes place by zoospores which move or aplenospores which are static. And the spores are developed in the sporangium that helps in the formation of a zygospore. Example are mucor, 
uh, rhizopus and albugo. The second part was ascomycetes, also known as sac fungi. Multicellular comicetes are there, for example, penicillium. It can be unicellular, for example, yeast as well. The mycelium are branched and septate in all of these other ones. Only in this case, it was aseptate. In all the other three, it is branched and septate. Asexual reproduction is through conidia that develop exogenously in conidiospores. And sexual reproduction is from ascospores that develop endogenously in a sac called ascocarps. All right, so ascocarp contains these asco uh, sacs and they help in the formation of spores. The third one was basidiomycetes, again branched and septate mycelium. Fragmentation is the most important and common method of reproduction. Again, a dicarion phase is there and it helps in formation of basidium from basidiocarps and basidiospores. The fourth one was deuteromycetes and it's called um, the fungus an imperfect fungus because only a sexual reproduction is there and they help in mineral recycling. So lots of information to soak in in this video. I hope it was all clear. We will continue with the plant kingdom but that will be in the next video. So keep watching for more and thank you so much for watching this video.